I used to rent the pricey Panasonic S1H whenever I shot with anamorphic lenses because I thought that cheaper cameras just weren't suitable for lenses like this. But I was wrong. So let's debunk that myth and find the best cheap camera for the anamorphic look. Some would say that Panasonic's new S5 II is the best cheap camera for oval bokeh. And sure, it's inherited most of the anamorphic features from its older sibling, but I've found a much cheaper option. So first, let's get this out of the way. If we're using a 1.33 times anamorphic lens or the moment adapter, then we could say that any camera counts as suitable for anamorphic filming. After all, 1.33x anamorphics take regular 16x9 footage and make it widescreen, plus you get horizontal flares, which is cool. I think those two qualities are what propelled Moments 1.33x adapter to get a lot of hype, but even their own demo footage shows the reason why I'm not a fan. The out-of-focus areas look very similar to regular footage. If I'm going to shoot anamorphic, I'd prefer to get closer to the cinematic gold standard of using 2x anamorphics on open gate Super 35 film. Just look at that sweet stretched blur. So this is where people often think it has to get expensive. If your lenses are more anamorphic than 1.33x, then people usually recommend shooting in 4x3 mode, and the least expensive option that I could find for that is the now discontinued Panasonic GH4. For $325 on eBay, and even after adding the $97 Vlog firmware upgrade, it's by far the cheapest camera for capturing footage that's nearly square. But there's one problem. The gh 4 sensor is quite a bit smaller than our gold standard for anamorphics. So a shot like this would end up looking like this if it was recorded on the GH4 with the same lens. I experienced this firsthand when I rented the very similar GH5 and a 1.8 times lens. I really like the footage, but any micro four thirds sensor is gonna have a deeper depth of field and therefore less prominent bokeh than the cinematic gold standard. Now with spherical lenses, you can essentially magnify the size of the sensor by using a speed booster, but I don't know of any affordable anamorphic lenses that will fit in front of a speed booster without breaking through a kind of important bit of glass. So I'm eliminating the GH4. It's a great camera, but it's not the cheapest good camera for stretchy squeezy glass. I bet that Panasonic's S5 II will be a great deal on the secondhand market in a couple of years, but for today, I can't ignore its weirder cousin, the S1. Yes, it has terrible autofocus, but to anamorphic lenses, autofocus is about as useful as asking Siri to do the dishes. Now for $1,400 on eBay, the S1 can shoot almost Super 35 in 4x3 video mode, or full frame 3x2. This one has the Vlog firmware, which enables the best tool aspect ratios, but you can always buy it without and pay the extra $140 to upgrade. So with the S1, we're already $600 cheaper than the S5 II, but I'm not finished yet. I found a couple of the original S5s for sale in good condition for $1,100. This 2020 camera can shoot 4x3 footage in APS-C mode, which is more similar to the S1H's Super 35 mode than it sounds. I'm starting to regret renting the S1H, now I've seen that the S5 is half the price and nearly as good. Now would you believe me if I said there's a camera that's even cheaper that can still match the anamorphic film standard? Well, we just have to debunk one myth quickly first. I started renting the S1H because I thought that 16x9 footage was no good for anamorphic shooting. I was mistaken. Now it's true that most hybrid cameras have a 3x2 sensor that crops to 16x9 in video mode. But look at this, full frame footage with TikTok's aspect ratio turned sideways is actually a little taller than Super 35 open gate. And horizontally, we have a lot more sensor area. So if we're using the gold standard of a two times anamorphic lens, we just need to crop a third of the image from the edges to account for that. After that, we've got the most famous cinematic aspect ratio with the same depth of field and the same field of view. Now, I will admit that 2x lenses are too expensive for me, but luckily, if we use a 1.8x lens, we can trim just 25% of the image. And with 1.6s like these from Sure, it's only 16%. To me, that crop is a small price to pay for the benefit of 1.6x ovals, which I reckon are a lot more noticeable than 1.33x blurry balls. I can definitely handle footage where the resolution is 16 or even 25% less than 4K. Most cinemas still only project at 2K resolution and it's good enough for them, plus I've still got all 2160 of my vertical pixels, but there is one issue to work around. Most cameras don't have a way to fix the squished footage on screen, so using an external monitor is pretty much essential so we can see what we're shooting accurately. But I already have and use a monitor because I prefer working with a larger screen, 
So for me, the only drawback of using 16x9 footage for anamorphic lenses is that resolution crop off the sides. And that doesn't seem like a very good reason to buy or rent a whole extra camera. And my final argument in favour of shooting in this aspect ratio is that cropping the edges gives me the option to reframe horizontally. Now, by the way, if you'd like to download my test footage, please consider joining my Patreon. For this month's bonus video, I showed the workflow that I use to quickly de-squeeze and crop any footage from any camera with any anamorphic lens. Anyway, so this means we can use anamorphic lenses for any full frame, boring old 16x9 footage. As long as I'm willing to crop 25% of the sides, I can shoot with Great Joy's 1.8x lenses in EF mount. A cheap adapter like this will make these compatible with most mirrorless cameras, including Sony's E mount and Canon's R mount. Unfortunately, I can't use these with a DSLR like my T3i, thanks to their extruding rear elements. Or if I'd prefer to crop just 16%, then I can use these 1.6s from Sure. Just choose the mount and I can get an image equivalent to the gold standard with any of these full frame cameras. But which is the cheapest one that's good enough to stand in for the expensive S1H? After scouring the internet and getting way too obsessed about sensor sizes and resolutions, I reckon I finally found the cheapest camera that's good for anamorphic lenses. It's from 2015 and it probably has better low light performance than any of the cameras I've mentioned today. It's the Sony A7S II. There are plenty for sale on eBay for around $800. So even if we had to buy a monitor to preview the footage correctly, the total would still be less than the price of an S5. $800 for a camera that can shoot anamorphic with the same properties as OpenGate Super 35 film. And it has the extra bonus of decent autofocus in case we want to shoot spherical hands-free. So the A7S II can be bought or rented for less than any of these cameras, but I'm not gonna buy one. The cheapest good camera for me is the one I already have. This is the Nikon Z6, which has been lukewarm to the competition since 2018 when it began shipping. It's worse than the Sony in a few ways, and somehow more expensive to buy secondhand. But obviously, since I've already got it, it's much cheaper to me. With this camera, I can shoot anamorphic more often without needing to rent that S1H and without being tempted to buy that S5 II just because everyone's talking about it. I guess maybe it's hardly surprising that I found what I was looking for right underneath my nose. This video is brought to you by me and the DSLR Guide patrons who have made this video possible thanks to their generous support. In particular, I'd say thanks to these people who get their names in the credits, along with the bonus videos and the downloadable content that every patron gets access to. So please consider joining our Patreon community. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next time.